In this episode, I just wanted to take a fond, fun look back at the Game Boy Color. Now, we'll go over some of the specs, of course, but really, I just wanted to take this trip down memory lane and reminisce about why the Game Boy Color is one of my favorite video game systems of all time. So as you sit back, relax, and enjoy this content, I hope you'll consider picking up your smartphone or your tablet and subscribing to the Geek Therapy Radio podcast in your favorite podcast app, and also subscribing to the YouTube channel. Your consideration is not lost on me, and I truly appreciate that you'll be spending a few minutes with me here today. But without further ado, let's take a warm look back at the Game Boy Color. The Game Boy Color was released in the late fall of 1998, just in time for the Christmas season. I was 15 years old and wanted one as desperately as if I was half that age, and if I'm honest, probably more so. I was a greasy, pimply-faced teenager and wanted a Game Boy Color more than I wanted a kiss for my crush, Brittany. Now there's probably something there for a therapist to decipher. Why a 15-year-old boy wanted a Game Boy more than a date with his high school crush? But that is far outside the scope of this episode, so we'll just move on. Now, I can clearly remember the biggest reason why I wanted a Game Boy Color. The Game Boy Camera, which was released just a few months prior over the summer. I felt like the Game Boy Camera was pushing my grayscale Game Boy Pocket to its limits, and somehow it would be miraculous on a new color screen. That didn't quite turn out to be the case, but it was much sharper and was more fun manipulating its limited color functions. Most of the time, I just left the Game Boy Color in grayscale mode when using it with the Game Boy Camera. I think this is a good point to go over some specs of the Game Boy Color, and we'll start here with the screen. After all, this was the entire point of the Game Boy Color, the color screen. The resolution is actually exactly the same as the original Game Boy at 160 by 144. For those playing at home, that's a PPI of just a hair under 83. Yeah, double digit. Modern smartphones push over 500 PPI easily. 83 PPI is glorious pixel chonk. But as I've mentioned in the podcast before, back then our imaginations readily filled in the gaps and hardware limitations usually forced developers to focus on great gameplay. For the most part. The Game Boy is not without its long list of duds, but it also has Tetris and, of course, Pokemon, two of among the best-selling video games of all time. So resolution ain't everything. Also, just like the original Game Boy, other than the rare Game Boy Light, there was no illumination for the screen. Honestly, this didn't bother me too much. I also had a Game Gear, and I found that the incredible sharpness of the Game Boy Color's TFT screen to more than make up for the lack of illumination. The illuminated screens of the Game Gear and the Atari Lynx were milky, blurry, ghosty horror shows. The illuminated screen was a nice feature, of course, but I do remember inching along in some segments of Sonic the Hedgehog because moving the sprite just created a blur. Now, a lot of this is just personal taste and opinion, however, so we'll just move on. If you are interested in adding illumination to your Game Boy Color, it can be fairly tricky. It wasn't even possible to backlight a Game Boy Color until recently. You could add front light, but backlight was an entirely different story. But if you're interested, go check out my buddy Colin's YouTube channel. It's called This Does Not Compute. So some other quick specs are the processor and memory. The 8-bit processor is made by Sharp, the LR35092, and could operate at a slower speed that was backwards compatible with original Game Boy titles, as well as doubly as fast for Game Boy Color titles. 4.19 MHz and 8.38 MHz, respectively. RAM comes in at a whopping 32 kilobytes, while the video RAM sits at 16 kilobytes. Though only an 8-bit CPU, the Game Boy Color could pull from a 16-bit palette of 32,768 colors, but could only display 10, 32, or 56 colors on the screen at the same time. 
However, a handful of games used some technical trickery to display over 2,000 colors at once in something called high color mode, cannon fodder being one of these games. So those are the technical bullet points. There are more, but again, those are the most important and the point of this episode is to simply enjoy this amazing handheld console. If more specs come up naturally, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So the second reason I desperately wanted a Game Boy Color was that it was the first handheld console to be backwards compatible. That means it could breathe new life into the games I already owned. And it really did. I mean, we got a taste of playing Game Boy games in color with the Super Game Boy on the Super Nintendo, but the Game Boy Color was portable. And for the more hardcore among us, this was speed accurate compared to the Super Game Boy, which actually sped up games by about 2.4% due to some division and conversion between the clock speed of the SNES itself it was attached to. Now, I wasn't hardcore enough to notice. In fact, I wasn't even aware of the 2.4% speed up until fairly recently. Anyway, I mean, I didn't only want to see new games in full color, I wanted to replay old games in color. Also, in my case, with my terrible eyesight. It was like playing them for the first time. The crisp, sharp screen felt like I could see what everyone else could see all along. Playing Super Mario Land 2 for the first time on the Game Boy Color was almost emotional for me. It was like a brand new game. I could finally see what I was doing perfectly. Now, speaking of games in color, full color compatibility gets kind of murky. Color modes were generally, but not entirely, dictated by cartridge color. In general, clear cases would only work in the Game Boy Color, or later devices like the Game Boy Player on the GameCube. Black cartridges could work on both the Game Boy and in enhanced color on the Game Boy Color, like Tetris DX, for example. And old original gray cartridges could sort of retrofit limited colors to the games. Donkey Kong on Game Boy, by the way, is one of my most favorite games of all time on any system ever. If you've never played it, do it as soon as humanly possible, even if only on an emulator. It holds up incredibly well, even today. It is addictively engaging and the perfect amount of challenge. So the very first Game Boy Color exclusive title I bought was Super Mario Bros. Deluxe. Now even though it was cropped a bit to fit the Game Boy Color screen, I played the crap out of it. It had fun extra game modes that put a new twist on the old classic, and you could print out the artwork you earned on the Game Boy printer. That was awesome. Another cool feature of the Game Boy Color, though I didn't really use it much, was the infrared communication port. I just thought it was cool it was there. You could use it to operate televisions in real life in the game Mission Impossible, so that's pretty cool. I also played the ever-loving doo-doo out of Tetris DX and Donkey Kong Land. Donkey Kong Land is virtually impossible to play on an original Game Boy, if I'm honest, and Game Boy Pocket. It was far too beautifully detailed. Before the Game Boy Color, the only viable way to play was on the Super Game Boy. Now we could play it whenever and wherever we wanted on the super sharp screen of the Game Boy Color. Awesome! Now, the list of games I played on the Game Boy Color would take way too long to mention in this one episode. But I played many, many games I otherwise would not have if it were not for what I felt to be the miraculously clear screen. Next, I'd like to share the current form of my Game Boy Color today, as it may help give you some ideas on possibly modding yours. I will say now, however, that my mods are extremely minor and tasteful. I have not added any illumination or modified it for chip tunes or anything like that. I just wanted to give my Game Boy Color the blackout treatment, so I simply ordered a black shell and buttons from one of the infinite vendors you can find easily online, and 10 minutes of installation later, I just wanted to give my Game Boy Color the blackout treatment, so I simply ordered a black shell and buttons from one of the infinite vendors you can find easily online, and 10 minutes of installation later, I had the clean black Game Boy Color I desired. While I was at it, I also ordered and applied a glass screen to replace the scratched, scuffed plastic original. 
By the way, anybody can replace the screen on these things. It requires absolutely zero skill or technical knowledge. Adding a glass screen to your Game Boy Color, or any Game Boy for that matter, is one of the cheapest upgrades you can make. It does nothing to diminish its original look. In fact, it improves the aesthetics, in my opinion. But really, it's a super cheap way to greatly improve the clarity of gameplay. The glass is scratch and scuff resistant, making it even easier to see what you're doing. So the last mod isn't really a mod, but I did buy an EverDrive GB. This allows you to store your backed up ROMs onto any standard micro SD card, and it creates save files in game Games that support game saves. You can then load these saves into any emulator and continue where you left off on the original hardware. That's pretty rad. And vice versa, you can load saves back onto the SD card. A throwaway 2GB micro SD card costs pennies if you already don't just have one laying around in a drawer, and will technically hold every Game Boy and Game Boy Color game ever produced and still have an incredible amount of space left over. It's also a great way to play homebrew ROMs on original hardware, like Gunman Clive and other tech demos. However, it must be said that the EverDrive GB is not cheap whatsoever. You could easily buy three or four working Game Boy Colors for the price of this cart, but if you are serious about your Game Boy collection, I'd say the EverDrive GB is almost a must. As of recording, they can run upwards of around $120. That's nothing to sneeze at. But I have absolutely zero buyer's remorse. I love mine. I'm very happy I bought it, but of course this is just my own opinion. This is not an ad, I bought it with my own money a few years ago. Nobody is sponsoring this content. I just feel that if you're serious about your Game Boy and have the money, it's well worth considering. But do whatever you want with your money. You know, $120 would buy a lot of physical cartridges too. So to start wrapping this up, I'd like to express just how much I like, you know, simply experiencing the Game Boy Color. I like looking at it. I like touching it and feeling its shape and textures. I love its lines and simplicity. I love its perfectly grippy battery booty. I like the physical sensation of sliding a physical switch to complete a circuit to send 3 volts of electricity from the AA batteries to power a beautiful 8-bit processor, the wonderful TFT screen, the speaker, and of course all of the other old school yet fascinating circuitry. 20 years ago, this was magic. You know, it's still magic. When I look at my smartphone, all I see is a tool and more often than not, a burden, if I'm honest. It's hard to imagine any of us feeling nostalgic 20 years from now about something like our current smartphone. And you know, I think that's because the Game Boy Color served only one purpose, to play games. To play, and in many cases, escape. Modern devices do so many different things all at once, in all likelihood, you may not have gotten this far into the episode without getting a text, email, notification, or any number of other distractions. It's also entirely possible that some people quit this very episode because they simply didn't like it. But when you played the Game Boy Color, that's all you were doing. There were no distracting notifications, no waiting 20 minutes for patches and updates, and if the game sucked, you often kept playing anyway because you couldn't just switch to Netflix or YouTube. But I think I'll end it there. It's incredibly easy to be poetic and nostalgic with the Game Boy Color, and I could go on for hours. That type of thing would be better suited to the podcast format, and wouldn't you know it, I do have a podcast. <laughs> Great segue, and if you like this sort of fun stuff, I'd wager you may like my show as well. So, if you haven't already, it'd be awesome if you consider subscribing to Geek Therapy Radio and your favorite podcast app. Also, if you live in Houston, Texas, you can actually catch the radio show on the actual radio on KPRC 950 AM. On KPRC 950 AM. Currently, it's 10 p.m. Saturday nights, Central Time, but that might have changed by the time you consume this content in the future. There's actually some talk of syndicating my show to other cities soon, so if you'd like to hear Geek Therapy Radio on your local radio, just email your local radio station. That'd be really cool, actually. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please remember, above all else, even this very content,
If you take away anything, just to remember that you are worthy of loving others and being loved. And also remember that we are all geeks about something. So embrace your inner geek and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.